Uh, I'm so glad you came out tonight, and I know hopefully there's some people that are going to watch later online or watching if you're not able to be here because this is a, a, a topic that I, that I think, and you know, I've never heard it addressed, um, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's so much of a sermon as it is a, an explanation and a biblical view of what God's heart is for us as believers in Christ, as as uh, families, as husbands and wives, uh, children to parents or uh, uh, co-workers, uh, friends, uh, co-servants of the Lord, in, you know, within ministries, uh, and so I think I think we get get a hold of a little different perspective when it comes to relationships tonight, uh, having to do with this topic of healthy sensitivity. So uh, we have uh, uh, we have oh you put up a a, a board. Uh, Pastor Zach, thank you, because uh, because we we are a little short because Tammy's dad had died and and um, we just we've just really been short in the office and and we're trying to change over to a new system and so a lot of us don't know what we're doing and I never did know what I was doing when it comes to graphics, so thank you, Pastor Zach, you rock. Um, so um, the, the first scripture that I just want to turn your attention to to, to kind of as a basis for us tonight. Uh, is typically shared in many other different perspectives, but I believe it has a, a, a great bearing on this topic of sensitivity. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It's 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind. It's not, it does not envy, it does not boast, it's not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. In the King James, it reads this way. Charity, meaning God love, suffers long, is kind. Now notice, suffers long. In other words, just think of the word, suffers long. Okay, it is a little different twist on is patient. Okay, suffers long. And is kind, is kind, it charity envieth not, it's not envious, charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up, it does not behave itself unseemly, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, is not easily provoked thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, and love bears, or this, this it charity, it bears all things, beareth all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, charity never fails. Uh, another verse that I want to give you is Romans 12, 9, and 10, where it says, love must be sincere, to hates what is evil, cling to what is good. Here it is, be devoted to one another, Honor one another above yourself. So we have two ways to be unhealthy in sensitivity. And that is to be oversensitive. I don't have that problem. Or to be insensitive. And by nature, because as we're born, just listen carefully, we are born with tendencies that are sinful tendencies. And God has to redeem us. You know, when it comes to human sexuality, the big thing is, well, I was born this way. Um, and my answer to that is we all were born in a way that would, would pursue unhealthy or unbiblical sexual fulfillment in whatever area that might be, as a teenager or whatever, because there's many ways to do that. Any, anything from looking at magazines to looking on now on the Internet to inappropriate behavior as a teenager inappropriate behavior outside of marriage, etc. All of these areas uh, are areas that in our humanity, in our flesh, that we're born in such a way that it's, uh, it that is a sin mindset. So when it comes to um, relationships, I believe that sensitivity is an area that can be out of whack, have a sin uh, perspective in the middle of it. So my insensitivity is something that God, by his spirit, needs to save me out of and help me learn by his spirit and to follow led of the spirit and full of love to be sensitive, okay? 
How many of you understand what I just said there? Is that right? Now, by, by, there's a piece of, of that that goes, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not easily hurt by too many people, but I can be hurt by just about anybody. And um, because I have, this, I have these filters in me that help me adjust everything. Uh, and I'll get into that when I talk about healthy sensitivity. But I can be insensitive in this way, in that I don't understand how a, another person takes what I'm doing or saying or trying to communicate. It's difficult for me to have empathy or to get in their position and hear from their ears and their feelings in conversation. So, you know, the Bible talks, there's a verse in Paul writes to the Ephesians, he says, speak the truth in love. And, and what I believe is love is speaking the truth, and I'm feeling love toward that person, but when I speak the truth, sometimes it comes across hurtful and insensitive. <clears throat> I can either go, well, I can't help it, I'm, in, I'm an insensitive jerk, just get used to it, or I can pray that God's Spirit will guide me with each person to learn how to communicate in such a way where there's not offense. Paul says, I, be, I become all things that I might win some. And winning is not just bringing them to Christ, but discipling them and leading them. It doesn't do Paul any good to be offensive to his listeners when he wrote the letters, the Pauline epistles. The, and so, you know, it does, surely doesn't do you or I any good as parents to offend our children. And some parents will speak in insensitive ways, in discipline, to actually uh, as a, provoke their children, where Paul says, don't provoke your children, fathers. And so that's an insensitive way of going about teaching or directing, and you can harden, you can have conflict, and you can have brokenness in those relationships. And, and you know, here's the thing, that can go into your 50s and 60s where you can't get along with your kids because in your oversensitivity, you react and say things that are insensitive and angry out of hurt because I've told you and I tell the fifth graders one of the main things, hurt people hurt people. When you're hurt, when you're bruised, it's easily for, for you to take things when someone bumps into that spot that's on you and then you strike back and you hurt someone back. Unintended or maybe not even knowing it not even understanding because you're hurt so much at a person that you do something to hurt them back and they don't even get the fact that you're hurt. They don't understand that uh, from your perspective, you're so hurt that you don't know how else to respond. And so they don't, they don't get that. All they get is you're not being nice to them. You're doing things that are hurtful. You're saying things that are cutting and not kind. And um, so... I think that in my, my being insensitive, some of the things that I need to do to fix that so that my insensi insensitivity is not sinful is, is to follow what it says here in Scripture, okay? So it talks about love being kind, right? It talks about um, uh, being patient, and preferring another. In other words, uh, it does not behave itself unseemly. Um, and, and so I, I think there's a way that we can go about things that when we, and, and also this is the big one for insensitivity, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourself. So I think that in, in, if you have a tendency to, in, with your sensitivity, to be insensitive, to not be able to understand where a person is coming from, I think the biggest thing to do is to, to be full of the Spirit and full of love, to be able to look at them and, 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 and honor them in such a way that you're doing your best to understand the best way to communicate where you don't offend them. Whether they are insensitive or not, it's easy to go, I mean oversensitive. It's easy to excuse your insensitivity by saying, well, they're just oversensitive. Why do they have to be oversensitive? They take everything wrong. 
That's, that's, that's not, you know, that's not my situation. My situation is I need to, whether they're oversensitive or not, not to judge that, just do my best to live my life sensitive to the Spirit and to others that I show kindness and I esteem them and I honor them above myself. And one of the things that I have to remember that helps us both on being insensitive and oversensitive is that we have an enemy that's against what God's goal is for us as families, as, as, uh, as uh, uh, believers. And Paul talks about it in every book, and that is that we dwell in unity and love. And insensitivity will break that up, and oversensitivity will break that up. And the enemy whispers lies. He whispers, you know, he doesn't care about you. If you're an old person, you know, he'll whisper, oh, he, just, he just cares about young people. Or he'll whisper to, to you when someone is human, and this is another thing you have to remember if you're oversensitive, is that people are human and, and they don't always express themselves exactly right. And so sometimes a point of clarity is needed. That's when you say, hey, I felt this way when you said this. What did you mean by that? Help me understand. Oh, no, I didn't mean to make you feel that way. I didn't mean to, to, to have you hear that. This is what I meant. And now clarity keeps there from being offense. But the enemy doesn't want clarity. He wants for you to believe what he whispers through the, the, the imperfect human nature of being concerned and, and, and what, uh, what, we've, what we've categorized as insensitive to have you hurt by whispering that person when they actually forgot the appointment, that person doesn't care about you. Or they forgot something uh, that they told you they would do that, that just to whisper, well, they're just, they never meant to do that. They just said that. They're just lying. So the Holy Spirit bears all things. In other words, the Holy Spirit, God's love, says that, understands that there are times people have things going on and, uh, and that they're, they're human and they're going to forget or they're going to say something cl clumsy and they're, gonna, they're going to clarify so they don't take up offense because the enemy will pound at you and the only way, if your tendency is to be insensitive, the only way to fight back is to put truth on top of the table. Hey, pastor, did you mean this when you said this? I heard this, it's felt this way. Is that what you meant? See what I'm saying? And hopefully I didn't mean that. I, don't, I know that in my heart, and I know, I, I believe this as a basic rule of life, love believes the best. I mean, he knows that. So why would you believe that someone intentionally is gonna offend you? So I know that when I feel some way, when I feel a little hurt, or I feel like some, somebody's angry at me or, or giving me uh, body language or you know, passive aggressiveness and you know, something's wrong uh, going on there, you know, I, I, I choose to believe the best about the person because love believes the best. Instead of jumping to conclusion and then feeling hurt and, and saying, well, they, they did this and this is how they feel and, and they're just, you know, that really hurt my feelings. Why would they say that? Why would they do that? And I'm telling you that I, there's not a week that doesn't go by that I deal with this either between two people or that I'm dealing with it individually, personally with someone. As many people as I deal with and sometimes situations trying to help couples, I irritate them, I anger them, I upset them when I'm only really trying to help and I'm praying God help me choose the right words. Now, I want to balance this with the fact that sometimes the truth upsets some people, and you can do it by the Spirit as lovingly as you can, and it doesn't matter. You know, the truth is like walking into the light, and you've been in darkness, and all of a sudden someone says, well, this is the truth, and it's like a bright light, and you're going, ah, oh, and you don't want to look at that, and that's upsetting. And sometimes the Holy Spirit in time, because people are godly, and I see this happen all the time, they just give them a little time and they work through that and they realize the intent wasn't there. Um, and so, um, you know, if you're insensitive, just remember something. Satan is wanting to use your words to cr create problems. And if you're sensitive, just realize that Satan is wanting to, to, uh, to cause you to take things wrong on many levels. Remember this, our commitment 
and sensitivity uh, are directly, you know, the commitment to another person and our sensitivities toward each other are very proportionate to the level of our relationship. See, you're not as easily hurt by a stranger, but the clo person you're closest to and the person you love the most, those people can really hurt you. So when you're in a relationship with your spouse or your kids or your brother or your sister, your parents, those are more volatile relationships where the hurt can be there more because you, you expect more. They are in a position they can hurt you. Me, as pastor, I know that that's an important, important relationship with people. And I know that I can do things to really cause pain and hurt uh, in, in the hearts uh, of, of people that I love. And, and, and often I have no clue. And, and that really upsets me and bothers me. And I'm asking God to help me to, to, uh, to cut that down like to bare minimum and not do that anymore. Um, so that's my side of, of being insensitive, coming across insensitive. I, I, I have to stop. If you want to deal with insensitivity, stop, listen to God and think. God, help me understand how, how they take things. Help me understand how to say this where they won't take it wrong. You know, and, and think about um, how someone else might take it. I may not take it that way, but how will someone else take that? Try to put my, myself in, 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 their, in, their, in their position, in their feelings. But, but just know this, that the people you're closest to, they're the ones that can hurt you the most and create problems. And also remember that people have different areas of sensitivity based on a lot of different uh, factors going on. For instance, your background and how you were brought up, your, your what, what was acceptable um, and what wasn't acceptable. Um, things like, you know, in the Hill family, if you say S-H-U-T and then U-P, which I spell it because that's a curse word in the, in the Hill family to say, shut up. In our youth culture, it just means shut up. Like when you say, you hear something and, you know, it's like cool, you go shut up. Like really? You know, that's what that means for, for, for some of you that like me, you don't know that. I had to figure that out. But, but, you know, someone might say that and be very offended at that when you didn't mean any offense because in your culture, like in my culture, that, you know, I grew up in Texas. I didn't even, I don't even understand that, to be honest with you, Pastor Jeff. It just doesn't make sense to me. Or in my family growing up, wearing a hat anywhere didn't matter. Hats weren't any, it didn't mean anything. But it's very disrespectful, and some people are very offended. You wear a hat at their dinner table. You wear a hat here. You wear a hat there. People get offended at you and upset with you. And, 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 and so we have to, we, we, as we grow and as things are pointed out, it's right to just adjust so that we know I don't want to offend anyone. In some cases, when someone does something extra nice, they're looking for a note in the mail because in their culture, they're note writers, and they put that in the mail, and they're offended if they don't get a thank you note when they go out of their way to do something really special, and I don't see that thank you note there. And what is a common courtesy or sign of respect to one person is not necessarily the same for another. Another thing is that some people have been taught lies and brought up with lies. One of them, in my opinion, is that this, this thing is that anything that someone teases you about, there's an element of truth in it. I don't believe that in a minute. It doesn't mean there's any truth in something you tease. And or when, you know, sometimes it can come across as mean. And um, some people even get offended at me when I tease about myself. They do. They've been very upset with me because I tease that I'm ugly. All I know is this, is that when I look in the mirror in the morning, the, the person I'm looking at, I don't know, is someone else in the mirror. I don't know who that is. And I've tested the mirror to find out if it's demon-possessed, and I'll have someone else come over <laughs> and look in the mirror and I look in there, and it, sure enough, it's them. So it only happens when I'm looking in the mirror that there's someone else in the mirror. And that may offend you that I say that. My mom, I got a weird sense of humor, and I offend people with it. I don't mean to. But I have to learn to think 
before I tease about certain things. Pastor Brett has for years tried to help me with this. How much you, Pastor Brett? So I, I, I did a wedding for a, a friend of mine's son who, you know, I was involved in discipling him and just and coming to the Lord and all that kind of stuff. And just great friends. They've been gone here from 15 years or so. And, and I'd planned this wedding for months and months in advance that I was going down. And it was two weekends ago. And I was there on that Saturday night and did the wedding. And so they live about an hour from my mother. And I was going to go see my mother who, who um, you know, was doing okay, you know, and but about four weeks before this trip that I was going to see my mother anyway, I get a call that my mom's going to die the day, that day or the next day. Well, I'd just been there Thanksgiving. It was a good trip. And I didn't, you know, I'm going, she was like out of it. She wasn't making any sense. She was kind of comatose and all these things. And I'm going, well, I'm not going to go there. Well, that offended people. So then they pressured me to go. So I went. So I got there. And sure enough, she's going, Mom. She looks dead. Okay? So I kept, you know, visiting her because I went there. I went there because I wanted to be there when she died because everybody told me you should be there when she died. Am I offending anybody with this? Okay. So I'm there with her, and sure enough, the baby boy, there's three of us boys coming home, was like medicine, and she just perked right up before long. And she's just sitting, and she just, she's just like, she looks like I, I, just unbelievable by the time I leave two weeks later. So I came back that next Sunday in the second service. I made the statement. I said, I went there because my mom was dying and she didn't die. It was a wasted trip. <laughs> now, some of you are offended at that. I had somebody very offended at me at that. But I got that sense of humor from my mother. It's her fault. Okay? I went back this last time when I was there to do the wedding and I told my mother that I'd said this to church and she literally wears the pins and she wet them laughing. <laughs> she, she laughed so hard for like 10 minutes. She thought that was the funniest thing in the world. And then she says to me, you know, James Lewis, I can't do anything right. I said, what do you mean, mom? She said, well, I hurt and I wanna die. I've been wanting to die for a long I can't even die. That's what she says to me. I thought I was going to die before. I really thought I was going to die, and I couldn't even die. I said, well, Mom, you should be, you're here for a purpose, and that's to pray, because she's a prayer warrior. So until that day, because she's in a lot of pain, she hurts, but she prays. So I'm, what I'm saying to you with that is to say this, is that sometimes a person's sense of humor offends people, but you don't understand the relationship that you have with the person that you're interacting with. And I've offended people because I'm really close and I know they're not offended, but other people are offended for them because of the way that I interacted with them. I mean, I can tease, like, like I, and I said this, we had a visitor one time. It came and he stood right there. And Pastor Jeff came up to pray with them. And they said, I got a prayer. I said, what's the problem? He says, the way you pastors can't stand each other. <laughs> Pastor Jeff said, what? Yeah, you're always mean to each other. He says, really? No, we love each other. No, you're always saying stuff like bad from the pulpit about each other. And, and then we figured it out. It's because Hawk wears these little napkins and we tease him, you know. And, and because I'm bald, they tease me. And, but, but we love each other. But see, people take offense at things. And, and so I'm going, okay, we got to be more careful. We talk about let's be, a little, be sure that we say, you know, we love each other, don't you? You know, and, 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 and deal with that because things that are, things that, you know, if we don't put things out in the light, people take them wrong. And so it's very important to understand that we all have a different personality. We all, we all tease differently. Um, and, uh, and, you know, for myself, teasing is a way to make a person smile, to lift them up. It's the way I say I, I, I love you, I care about you. If I'm teasing you, you know you're in my ballpark, you're on my team. If I'm not teasing you, I'm afraid I might offend you and I'm being very careful, okay? I'm, I'm just being vulnerable, but, but I love you enough to be careful because I do get it that some people, uh, because of their filter and their background, uh, can be easily hurt this way. So, uh, uh, you, know, I, you know, so if you're not gifted with sensitivity, 
you're kind of like Jesus saying to the people, they don't know what they do. I, I don't know what I do sometimes, and I want God to help me not to be that way. Um, so if you're ever offended, mark this down, clarify with the offender, uh, most of the offense is unattended. How many of you have hurt someone when you didn't mean to and you found out later you hurt their feelings? Huh? How many of you have been hurt and you found out later they didn't mean to hurt me? That was a, kind of a misunderstanding. Yeah. That, and this happens all the time, and Satan is right in the middle of it because he's a divider, and he whispers, and he lies. It's his destructive way, trust me. So I, my, say, my thing is with me, like if you feel hurt at me, please do me a favor, okay? Come right up to me and tell me, okay? And guess what? We're all imperfect with our words, and we will even say things that hurt people because you know, like James says, if you're not offended in word, you're the same as a perfect man to able to control your whole body. Because, you know, he's saying, you know, it's, it's easy to say something that's offensive. And so when you're a talker like me, I get in trouble. So one of the things I think is to go back in James where it's best swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Be careful how much you're talking so you don't spread uh, hurt, Right? All right, another way that people are offended is that person listening to you and talking to you doesn't fully hear you or doesn't understand or misunderstands and then gives you advice or gives you a perspective that's hurtful because you know the full story of what's going on and you think they know, but they didn't grab the whole thing. So in other words, you see this in husbands and wives. The husband will, will the wife will like pour out her heart and, 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 and tell him something and, and, and what's going on, and, and he didn't get it, and so he just gives a couple of sentences of, well, you do this, and you do this, and everything's fixed, and now she's angry as can be because like that was like worse than not saying anything because not only did he not hear, but he didn't understand, but she doesn't know he didn't understand, and his answer was just the wrong answer. It was a problem. So just remember, you know, a lot of times the person offending you, there could be just a misunderstanding of information that they have, and they're saying something based on the information they have, and they don't, they don't, uh, they don't, they're, they're hurting you, but they don't understand they are because they're saying what they believe they should say based on the facts that they've gathered and what they understand the situation to be. Especially if you deal with people when you're trying to hurt them, this is a big issue. Healthy sensitivity remembers that people forget. If you're oversensitive, remember people forget. It also remembers that some people, like I said, are socially challenged. Their manners and their etiquette and are just knowing not just not knowing what's socially acceptable so you don't take up offense. And again, healthy sensitivity remembers that Satan lies and so does insensitivity. And then healthy sensitivity is gracious toward those who are not by nature gifted with sensitivity. In other words, you know, we're to express uh, forgiveness quickly and, uh, and, and, and to be loving believes the best. Instead of jumping to the conclusion that was an intentional hurt, just remember that if a person does something, just be a little gracious with them, knowing that even in my sermon, I'm probably saying something that's offensive to people that have a tendency to be sensitive. My insensitive, I'm trying to be sensitive up here, guys. Does, does it feel like it? How many think I'm trying to be sensitive? How many think I'm not trying to be sensitive? Thank you very much, right back here. <laughs> He's in my fifth grade class. I'm never sensitive in fifth grade, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, that, I love that boy to death. He's, he's something else. He's an awesome kid. Um. So healthy sensitivity is gracious to those who are not by nature get through sensitivity. Healthy sensitivity stops and thinks. How would I feel when you're, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, insensitive when being healthy with it? How would I feel if someone said that or did that to me? How would that make me feel? And 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 or learning from situations how people feel and trying to stop and think. Now I wouldn't feel that way, but some people do. That's how I have to do it. I have to literally stop and think. Okay, now, if I do this and do that, some people take that wrong. This is, this is a challenge to me, guys. I'm just telling you. So if you 
want on both ends, truth on the table is what matters. Healthy sensitivity and healthy insensitivity speaks the truth in love. It says, if you ever offend me, would you please tell me? I mean, if I ever, if, if I ever offend you, would you please tell me? And if I am ever offended at you, promise you, I will believe that you didn't mean that and I will come to you to make sure we're okay. You understand what, that, what we're saying here? That is the number one antidote to Satan who's a liar is to get things out of the dark and on top of the table in the light and ask the question. Because here, here's, here's the thing. Some people are upset or hurt by something that happens and then their behavior, instead of clarifying their behavior out of hurt, they hurt other people. You did something to hurt them, you don't even know, and suddenly they say something very hurtful to you, and it like cuts you. And you're like, you get angry with them. It's like you don't wanna deal with them, and you don't like them. And uh, that, they're mean, and there's a lot of uh, things that, that we put on each other. When, when, when I've tried to come in and be a peacemaker, what I see is really loving, kind people who are bruised and hurt, okay? And who are reacting from that hurt. Uh, if, if, if someone throws a rock at you and hits you, they're throwing the rock to a pond, but it accidentally hits you, that hurts whether they meant to or not. If someone steps back with your high heel and you're in the floor and you don't see them and they step on you, that's gonna hurt a lot. And, um, but they didn't mean to. But it doesn't matter if, it mean, if they mean to or not, it hurts. And a lot of people do things where they forget or they say something or whatever else they do, they do things to hurt. They don't mean to, they don't even aware of it, but still, nonetheless, it hurts. If you can just, just remember to communicate first before picking up and throwing a rock back, because that's when we have conflict that just goes back and forth and it's a miserable place to live. It's miserable for you and for them. Um, also, when you disagree with someone, you can agree to disagree. And both, whether you're sensitive or insensitive, be, do it in love. For instance, you could disagree on, on whether six days of creation were literal or God created in periods of time. You could disagree on uh, can you lose your salvation or not. Can, you can disagree on uh, the end times, whether the rapture happens before the tribulation, in the middle, or the end of it. But when you walk away, you agree to disagree and you don't take up offense and you communicate with respect to each other as you argue your points or share your points in discussion instead of being sarcastic and making it personal. Because it's easy just to get sarcastic. And a lot of preaching is insensitive and I've done it. I preached against things and I've said things that were hurtful that I shouldn't have said to people that I'm trying to bring from darkness in the light to explain the biblical view, and I've said it in such a way insulting the person for their sin and stupidity. And it never pays. It's insensitive preaching, and, and I've, I'm, I try not to do that. So remember to clarify any offense. Did you mean to do this, or I felt this way when you said this, or did this? In other words, the. Uh, believe the person who offended you didn't mean to offend you. That's the, that's the ground rule. That's the basic ground rules. Uh, and remember, it's okay if you feel or sense or wake up in the night and someone, the Lord brings back, a, and I've had this happen a lot of times, and I'll call the next day, hey, I was thinking about that conversation. Did I offend you? Did you know that I'll get that happening an average of once a week throughout the year? someone in the congregation, hey, pastor, I was talking, and I just, I got to thinking, I didn't mean to offend you when I said, are they teased or something? Did I offend you? And did you know that not once did they offend me? In fact, I hadn't thought about it since it happened. So my temperament is just like that. But you know, the natural person like that, you know, is like that, like me, there's giftings to it. And the gifting is that, is that you know, pastoring hurts a lot. You know, people hurt you. And you can stay a long term because you believe the best and you know they don't mean to and you understand. You have a perspective that's understanding. And then sensitivity is a great gift that I wish I had because it sees that person that's lonely or hurt or that, that person that, that uh, and they understand how things happen. And, and I, I would give anything if I was more sensitive. I'd rather hurt more 
than hurt others. I'd rather be insensitive if I was going to have an out of balanceness, be out of balance with sensitivity. I'd rather be oversensitive and hurt more than to be insensitive and hurt others. I'd rather personally hurt because I'm, I, I'm, I'm, over, I'm a little oversensitive. But it's a great gift. In fact, peop, I tell people that I know are, 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 have good sensitivity balance or they, they at least are sensitive. I say, you know, I'm not good at this. So would you help me by telling me anytime that you see me being insensitive? Come and tell me and point out. And trust me, I've had that happen a lot. So here's the last thing. Healthy sensitivity knows where their bruises are. They understand that others don't know that those bruises exist. Like when I preach, I sometimes raise my voice. The person that's been yelled at by their parent, that's not, they don't receive well from that because they feel they're yelled, being yelled at. You know, when you get passionate and raise your voice, it doesn't mean you're yelling at, but if that's a filter. Or some people that are, have been abused as a child or abused or taken advantage of, even saying you look beautiful can come across offensive and be hurtful. Um, there's all kinds of things depending on uh, what your filter is that you, you say or do that is just a sensitivity for them because they're bruised and hurt from, from what's happened to them that they take offense easily in that area. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So one thing is when you build relationships and you get to know a person, you kind of find that out and you're careful, just like as if you knew that I had been hit right here by a motorcycle and this whole side of my body was hurting and really bruised and it was sore as could be, you wouldn't come up if you were thinking and do like that. Now me, I'm so like Columbo, forgetful and all that, that pers a person, I've just been there at the hospital with them and they had shoulder surgery and they come in, oh, it's good to see you, and I whack them on the shoulder. They go, ah! I said, oh yeah, that's right, you had surgery. So try to remember when you know there's sensitive places on people, sensitivities, so that we don't hurt. God wants us to, to, uh, to for the, 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 the last culminating major thing is you have to be a forgiver. Love keeps no record of wrongs. That's what 1 Corinthians 13. It believes the best and it keeps no record of wrongs and it endures all things, meaning it endures the hurts. It endures it. It takes it. it. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. And you you are in a world of hurt, of imperfect people, and you will be hurt. You guys are getting married. Guess what? You love each other. You don't want to hurt each other, but guess what? You will be hurting each other. Guarantee you can either work through it, talk through it, figure it out, or you can do like some people. They just give up. But that's just a fact, and it's the fact in a church when you're trying to do ministry together is that you hurt each other, you don't mean to hurt each other, and you know, so it takes a lot of forgiveness, a lot of love, a lot of kindness, a lot of attention, a lot of communication, and keeping things on the table, and we can keep the devil from winning this, this, this thing. Um, another, another, let me just mention one more thing that popped, popped in my head here that, that I meant to say, and that is this, is that Someone might act differently towards you and hurt you and offend you. And what you don't know is, is they have something really serious going on. Like their dad is sick and dying. Two people might be talking to each other and they're, you don't know that they're best friends from childhood. And usually they're pretty warm to you in church, but they're just focused right here. And you feel like they're just shutting you out and ignoring you when in reality they're hurting. It's very easy to take up offense because we don't know all the facts and we don't understand where the person's at. That's why it's important to clarify, to believe the best, ask the person don't, to believe they're not meaning to hurt you.